In this video, we're going to see how you can validate data when you work with server actions in Next.js. So this example is using a server action. And if we make a mistake here and I click on add, we're going to have this toast message that will show us a Zod error. Right, so we're going to use Zod to validate the data. So let's see how we can do that. So here we just have a simple to do's page. It's fetching the to do's from the database. So we have an H1. We have the form. I have collapsed the form here. And we have the list where we map over all the to do's. Now this form is using a server action and it's called add to do. And I have defined it here in its own separate file. Now, since this is a server component, I could also define it here, but for organizational purposes, I prefer to put it in its own file with use server at the top. So this function will just take the content. That's basically what we input here. And then it will attempt to insert that in our database and then it will revalidate our path. All right, so how can we use Zot here to make it all a bit safer? So let's say we wanna validate the data both on the client side as well on the server side, right? So this is our server side, but here on the client, before we actually send it to the server, before we inform the server action we also want to validate the data and right now what we have is only a server action that will immediately get invoked when we submit the form but now we want some client-side interactivity so we're going to have to refactor this form into a client component because you cannot have client-side interactivity in a server component so here in the components folder i'm going to create a component called form and i will just put my form in there rfc form and just paste it here it needs access to my server action so i will just import that here i don't need this and now i can use this form component like this. Need to import this and we can remove this import. All right, so this is still a server component now. And now we're going to make this form a client component. So I'm going to use the use client directive at the top of the file and I'm going to save here. All right, so now we've refactored this into a client component. So we can add client side interactivity here. And the way to do that here with server actions is to have a client action. So we have server actions, they only run on the server, but we can also have client actions, basically just a function here that we give to action here and that will run on the client so we can actually define that here we can actually just call that client action and it's going to be an async function that will take in form data and in the client action we can actually invoke the server action here so i'm going to remove it here so the add to do is our server action we can just invoke that here but then we can also have client side interactivity here so we can for example reset the form what we're going to do here is client side validation and what we're also going to do here is after we invoke the server action depending on the result of that we may want to output an error message to the user and we can do other things here as well like be optimistic with the ui for example it's actually a really cool hook use optimistic check out my other videos and server actions All right so let me just remove this so these are the two things that we're going to do in this video and i'm using typescript here let me quickly type this as form data and then this is what we can pass here to the action attribute here right so this is all code that will run on the client and then the server action when you call that all of this code will run on the server right client and server actions all right so we're going to use Zot here to validate this client side all right now before we actually do the client side validation with Zot, we're just going to construct a new to do object that we can then validate so what we can say here is const new to do and these to do objects in my example app here are objects with a content property and we can get that from the form when we submit the form we have this input here and a button so the only thing we actually have to pay attention to is this input here and it has a name of content and right? that's basically the text here so we can just grab that with form data dot get content Right, so if you pass a function here to action, you automatically get form data from Next.js. Right, so then you can use dot get to get the actual value of that input. And these objects optionally have an ID. It's going to be a number. Now, typically these IDs get created when we add them to the database. Right, so that will only happen here where I actually insert it with Prisma. It will actually create an ID. So here, when we just grab the information from the form, it doesn't have an ID yet because it hasn't been inserted in the database yet. So we're going to make that optional. Right, so here we're not going to have an ID because we don't have that when we first insert it into the database but later when you update it to do you do need an id right so we're going to make it optional right so this is just a very simple new to do so then we want to validate this with zot so i'm going to install zot npm install zot okay i've installed this and with zot you want to create a schema so we will just define that up here for now so what we can say is we can say to do schema and then we can use zot so let me import that we, we just we only have to import z from zot right so here we were grabbing the actual data from the form and now here we're going to describe how the to do should look like so we can say well it's an object so we can say z dot object and then in the object we will have a content property and optionally that id property so let's start with content here so we can 
just say this content property should be a string. So you say C dot string, everything else that you want to add here. So here we can say it should be trimmed, remove the white space. It should be at least one character, but at most 100 characters. All right. So this is a simple example of how Zot works. All right. And what you can then also do is you can provide custom error messages. So if the minimum is not at least one, we can say the to do content must not be empty or must be at least one character long. Right, and if the person goes over the maximum, we may want to output a different message. To do content must be at most 100 characters long. Right, so this is our schema now. Basically the blueprint for to do's. This is what the to do should look like. That's the content property. But we also have an ID property optionally. So we can say Z, that's going to be a number. And it's going to be optional. Right, you can just define it like this. Right, so now we have our schema. Now we can use this to validate that new to do. So we can say to do schema. And we could say dot parse. Parse this new to do object. Now if we do it like this, and there is actually a problem here for example maybe we forget the content property it will give us an error it will actually throw an error so you would have to wrap it in try catch and there's nothing wrong with that but in practice people do seem to prefer the other way which is save parse and here what happens if there is an error is there will not be an error thrown we just get a result here and in that result variable we can check if there actually it was an error so if the success was not true we can output an error message right so here we can already output an error message on the client here we're also going to output an error message if something went wrong on the server. All right, so let's actually see what we get if we actually do make this mistake of not adding the content to the object. So I'm going to inspect here to my console. And here what we can do is we can just log the results. So now what we have is a new to do, which is actually just an empty object here. But we have just told Zod that this object should have a content property and optionally an ID, right? So ID can be left off without problems, but content should be there. We didn't say that this was optional, right? So it has to be there. And now we have this new to do, it's empty. So now we're going to use to do schema dot save parse on that new to do so this result should not be successful right so we should be able to see some error so let's see what happens when i click add here all right i'm actually going to comment this out because it gives us a red squiggly line let's deal with that later so now we have this new to do with an object it doesn't have the content property and let's say it also has an id property but it's a, it's a string right? it should be a number so now we basically have two mistakes we don't have content and this id is of the wrong type because ID should be a number if it's there, right? So now with Zod, what's going to happen is we're going to parse that new to do. We're going to get some result. The result will not be successful now. And now here we can access the error messages. So let me quickly show you how we can access that. So you have result of error, and that's going to give you an, an issue per problem. So here we have two problems, two errors. It's going to create an issue for each one of them. So I'm going to save here. Now I'm going to click add here. Let's see what we get. And we get an array. Whoops, I get some other issue, but that's not a problem. So we get an array here. And this array has an object for each issue. So here the first one is expected number received string, right? And we can see path that has to do with the ID. And the second issue here is required. And that has to do with content, right? It received undefined, right? So we can use the message in here and the path to create one big error message that we can just output as a toast on the page right so let's do that right so what we can do is we can just create a variable here for the error message it's going to be a string initially empty and then we're going to loop through all those errors copilot already helping me out so i can say result error dot issues for each issue we want to append that to the error message right so here i get a copilot suggestion and this is not exactly what we want we'll say error message let's see let me make this full screen and let me close this here so what this needs to be is the previous error message plus the message of that issue plus a period and a space at the end so this message will be for example required so we also want to know the field to what that message is connected to right and zod gives us that here in issue.path and then it's going to be the first element that's an array and it's going to be for example content and then we can add like colon after that so let's see colon space and then the actual message so then it's going to be content colon required and then a period and then you have the next error message a little bit complicated to work with these Zot errors. Zot does help you out. So they do have two other methods that you can use, actually called format, to help you format the errors in a, an easier way to output something on the client. This is helpful if you have a complicated form with nested objects. If you have a more simple form, there is also flatten. So if you have no nested objects, you can use this. Now here we have a super simple form and I don't want to dive into the details of Zot too much. So we're just going to do it like what we've been doing here. So this is the error message now. And now we want to use a toast message let's say and i'm going to use react hot toast for that so let me install that npm install react hot toast 
Okay, so I installed this and the first step is to determine where the toast message should be displayed on the page. So basically where should it be top right and typically you do want to put that in the layout file. So let's go to the layout here. This is the root component of our app and what we can do here is we can add that here in the body and it's the toaster component. So let me import this and then we can specify the position. I think top right is the most common one. Most people are used to that. So I will just use that. And so that's just the placeholder. And now we need to actually invoke a toast message when we want to actually display a message. So here we now have the message constructed. Now we actually want to output it. So here what we can do is we can use this toast function and we can say dot error and then the message that we want to have displayed in that toast message. Now I need to import this and no help here. So let's see, import toast from React Hot Toast, actually a default export. All right, so now let's see what we get. So now uh, we still have this new to do, which has two mistakes. It doesn't have the content property because I commented this, this out. And it has an ID property, but the ID property is of the wrong type. It should be a number and here it's a string. And now it should fail to parse. And so we should be able to construct an error message and display that here to the user. So now let's try it and see what we get. I'm gonna write test here, press add, and we get a very nice toast message here. ID expected number received string, content required. So now it's very clear to us what went wrong. Right, so now if I fix these mistakes and I add this back, and maybe we don't have an ID. That ID is optional, so we can leave it up. So now this should work because now it adheres to this schema from Zot. So now if I click add, you can see there's no error message, right? Because here, the save parse will show result that success is true. So we don't go into the if block here. And here we're just not doing anything yet. All right, now, of course, now we actually want to invoke the server action. We want to we wanna send the new to-do to the server. So now what do we pass here? Do we actually use the variable new to-do? We have just parsed that, so it went successfully. So we could pass that. But Zot actually gives us the actual object in the result here as well. And it has some benefits of using that one. So you can actually use result.data here. I think that's a little bit better. So I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to save here. So now if I click add here, you can see we actually get our to do object here and it's showing us content test. So this is the same as just using new to do, right? And that's entirely true because if we add something here that's not in the schema, right? Something else, blah, blah. So here, if we would add something else, which is not in the schema, right? Something else, the property there is not defined here. If we would use new to do here and send that to the server, that something else will be on there. But if you use this result.data here, if I now click add, here you can see it only has content it doesn't allow this something else to go through as well so it basically strips that information if you didn't specify that for the schema and it also has better typescript support so it's better to continue with the data that we get from zot once we parsed it so that's what we're going to send to the server here so now we're going to invoke the server action we're going to pass result.data and now we get red squiggly line let's see yeah so now we have to go to our server action here the server action right now is still expecting form data because that's what, how we had it defined before we refactor to a client action. So now in the server action, we're going to get a new to do. We know what type it's going to be, but this is going to run on the server. And typically you really shouldn't trust any information coming from the client. So I think it's best that we type this as unknown, right? We're going to assume this is unknown for now, and we need to validate this properly before we can safely assume it is actually of that type to do. Let me make this a little bit wider. All right. So now we basically want to do server side validation, and it's going to be almost the same as here on the client. So we want to have our schema be available in this file as well. So we might as well create a lib folder, library folder, where we put our types and our schemas. So I'm going to create lib. And typically you want to have a file where you centralize the types of your project. We might as well add our sort schemas as well. So here I'm going to copy this to do schema and I'm going to paste that here in types. Now here we need to import Zot, so I'm going to remove it from here and I'm going to paste it here. Now we want to export this so we can use it in other files. Now one other handy thing you can do with Zot is if you want to have a regular TypeScript type from this, you can use Zot.infer. You can use that schema and infer that type, right? So we're actually not going to use it here. We don't need that here, but typically in a bigger application, you do need that. Okay, so now we're exporting this to-do schema and let's see, we are using that here. So I'm going to import that. Right, so this is our client action, it's quite big. This is how it looks like right now in the form component. And now we are invoking the server action. Right, so I'm going to save here. We're going to go to our server action here and I'm going to remove, remove this. So before we try to attempt to insert it in a database, we want to validate the data that we get here. That's going to be the same as here on the client, right? So we might as well just copy this, paste it right here. Instead of client side, now it's server side validation. Now we do need our to-do schema. It's going to be from that file that we just created. Now here we're running on the server. So let's see if we parse this and it's not successful, we go here and we want to construct 
an error message. So this will all stay the same. Now here we don't want to use toast, right? We're on the server here. We cannot use toast messages, right? So here we don't want to use toast. Now what we want to do here is we want to return a message to the client, right? So here we want to return a plain JavaScript object with just an error property and then that message that we construct here. So now in our server action, if we get something that does not adhere to that to-do schema, we are going to return a message to the client. That's going to be an object with an error property. So now we need to go back to the client, right? Because here we invoke our server action and now it could be something wrong on the server. So here we want to assign a potential response to, let's say, a response. And then we can just check if there is an error on that response object. So if response.error and TypeScript complains because response could also be undefined. Maybe we're not returning anything from the server. So I'll use this. Well, if there is an error, we can just do the same here. We can use toast.error, right? So toast.error, and that's going to be response.error now. And right? so we send an object here with a key of error. So we say response.error, that the value of that will be the message, right? So let me put this here. And right? so now we have client-side validation and server-side validation. Let's quickly test this. So I'm going to disable the client-side validation here, and we're going to pass this new to do right now directly to the server and let's say we make some mistake here so we forget to add content and we add id but that's going to be a string whereas it should be a number right so now we're going we're to have two issues just like before so we should technically see the same toast message as before right because now this new to do has problems we send it to the server action server action is going to try to validate that it's not going to be successful it's going to create an error message and it returns that as an object here which we grab here and then output it with a toast message i'm going to save here and i'm going to press add here let's see what we get and indeed we get a very nice toast message here with a message from the server All right so let me add this back again All right so now we have a really nice setup with very safe validation both client side as well as server side i can collapse this so we can see it a little bit better so this looks good so now after we parse it here on the server we can also use that result object with the actual validated data just like we used before on the client result of data to actually insert it into the database typically you also want to wrap this in a try catch but i have a separate video on that so make sure you check out my other videos on server actions. Now, if you really want to become a professional React Next.js developer, I have a course on that. So make sure you check out the links in the description. Make sure you've also mastered the fundamentals, both JavaScript as well as CSS. I have courses on them both. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.